everyone, Uncle Jesse here. In front of me are all of the pieces that I need to make my own Mandalorian helmet. That's right, I've run off and 3D printed all of these parts on the Elgu Mars 2 Pro, as well as the Elgu Saturn. Now these aren't the largest resin 3D printers that are out there, but in today's video, I wanna show you how you can use these smaller printers to make some really big things. So before we jump into the assembly of the helmet, I did wanna talk about the files themselves and the prints. First of all, these are designed by Rob Puzia and they're available for free over on mymanyfactory.com. And what's great about these files is not only are they super accurate, but they also come in multiple variations, a full helmet, a half helmet, and what I ended up printing here was the helmet broken up into a whole bunch of other pieces. And what's great about that is that it fits on the Elgu Saturn build plate. But I should state that I did end up rescaling these slightly and it wasn't so much to fit on the build plate. Uh, sure, that helped a bit, but it was more that the original file was pretty large and it was gonna be way too big for my head. So I scaled it down to 94%. And one other benefit of that is that for some of these files, I was able to double up the files on the build plate of the Saturn, which helps save a bunch of time when it came to printing. And speaking of time, I did end up printing some of the smaller files on the Mars 2 Pro, which took about 15 hours to print in total. And then for all of the larger files, I printed on the Elgu Saturn, and that was about 63 hours worth of printing, or about two and a half days of print time, which is all in all, not too bad all considering. I should have paid closer attention to how much resin I ended up using for all of the prints, but if I had to guess, I would say it was closer to three, maybe three and a half bottles of resin that I ended up using for the build. And speaking of resin, to give this a little bit more durability, flexibility with this after it's cured, I ended up mixing in a little bit of Ceratec Tenacious. This is a really flexible resin in with the Elgu ABS gray like resin. So this way, if I happen to bump into the helmet or have the helmet bump into something or I accidentally drop it, I'm hoping it doesn't shatter into a million pieces since it's resin and resin is typically a little bit more brittle than your average PLA or PET G. In a future video, I might run off and do some further tests by mixing different resins that have different properties together to see what the outcomes are. And I should also mention that today's video is sponsored by the folks over at Elgu, the makers of the Elgu Center and the Mars 2 Pro, along with some other wildly cool resin 3D printers. And as I mentioned today, we are using their ABS gray like resin. They have some other really great resins that are available as well. Plus all of the prints that I'm using today were cleaned off in their wash and cure station. And if you're interested in more details about any of the Elgu products that I've featured in today's video, you can find links to their website down below as well as directly to their Amazon store. Thanks again to Elgu for sponsoring today's video. Now, when it comes to combining prints together, my typical process is to just use some super glue. So this is just liquid super glue that you can find in most stores. And it works relatively well for lots of miniatures and other smaller things where I just want to very quickly and easily join multiple pieces together. Well, this, we're gonna try something a little bit different and I might still end up using super glue as an initial bonding agent. But what we're gonna do today is use resin and a UV light pen to actually cure those pieces together. All right, so here we go. I've got a, I'm gonna, I've got a little container here that I'm gonna fill up with some extra resin. I probably don't need even that much. Just need a little bit to brush on. And then we're gonna try the curing process. So I'm gonna put it on this piece here to start, the Mando visor, and then we'll try it out and see how it goes. Let's align these pieces. Actually, one thing I did not consider is I'm gonna need another set of hands for this. So we'll see how well I can do this with just my own hands here. There we go. That was actually pretty quick, but obviously it did not uh, stick together all that well here. So let me put on just a little bit more. I'm gonna do is just brush on a little bit more on this to make a better join. Might have been a little too much resin there, but we'll see. Cures really fast with the UV pen. So I mean it's already it's, it's wild how quick that the resin cures there with the UV light. All right, so here's where I just made the join. So I used resin on this side. It's actually pretty smooth and you don't see that seam line at all. Obviously I'm gonna have to go back through 
and further sand this. But again, I'll just go in here. I'm not gonna apply as much resin as I just did there, but I'm gonna just roughly paint this on. And we're gonna fill that seam here with the cured with the cured resin here and the UV light. And the good thing about the resin as well is it's really easy to sand once it's cured and dried. So it's really not gonna be too much of a, a process to clean up any drippage or anything like that that might have overspilled on those seams. And I should also mention I am using the same, oh, what did I just do that for? <laughs> Look at that, look what I just did. What the heck was I just thinking? I just put the UV pen light on the little container of resin here. All right, so we have one piece of our Mandalorian helmet together and it worked really well welding these two pieces together as expected and I'll just be able to go in and sand that smooth and it should be really easy to sand since it's just resin. Here's an interesting piece uh, part of the helmet is really thin. It printed just, it's, there's not a whole lot of thickness to it where these ears are gonna go on afterwards. Uh, I was debating on just completely removing these all together. Uh, I'm not too concerned that it's warped slightly. Again, I can dip this in some hot water afterwards, but for right now, I'm just gonna focus on connecting the two main pieces and making sure that those are properly aligned. And then I'll try and get the rest of the helmet uh, there and connect it up properly. When I'm doing the welding here, I'm trying my best to push the two pieces together to really, you know, make sure that there's as little as possible of a gap between the two pieces. It's a little hard to do when you're by yourself, but it's, you know, it is possible. I'm just grabbing on with one side with one hand or the other with the other hand and trying to use my fingers here to use the, uh, the UV pen. And we've got the first half of our Mandalorian helmet put together. These were the first four pieces of the helmet that I was interested in putting together. And as you can see, it all welded together nicely. It even did a pretty good job of hiding those initial seams here by using the extra resin back over on the seams. Again, this would be a really easy cleanup process. And now it's just gonna be a matter of repeating the exact same steps for the back portion of the helmet. Also, don't be afraid to break out some sandpaper if you need to sand down any edges that might have an elephant's foot to them. All right, and here is my Mando helmet. Very excited about this, and I can't try it on yet. I need to make sure it's fully cured, so I'm gonna stick it in my UV bucket for a little while. Uh, I did apply an extra coating on the inside and make sure that that was cured. I just really wanted to make sure all of the seams were as solid as humanly possible. I am noticing that the front is warping slightly inward, so what I'm gonna do is just use some of this foam here, cut some slices off to space it out so it's pushing it out a little bit for the actual UV bucket curing process there. That way it's hopefully not deformed when I take it out for later on in the project. And if it is, I'll have to figure out some other solution for this. There we go, that should do. All right, and here we go. I have a fully assembled Mandalorian helmet that I printed in multiple pieces on the Elgu Saturn and the Elgu Mars 2 Pro. Very, very, very excited to see how well this turned out. For sure, there's a good bit of cleanup that I'm gonna have to do on this still. So I still need to do uh, the back panel here. The back vents just came out. Uh, I still need to do a lot of sanding and filing down where all of the seams are to help hide where the seams were. Uh, I still need to figure out what I'm gonna do with the sides here. Right now, the little ear pieces here are not quite fitting correctly, so I'm gonna either have to completely cut out this and insert these in, or maybe I'll try and sand it smooth. We'll see. 
Uh, one thing that I am happy how the front turned out is uh, I was a little bit nervous when I put the foam inserts in there that the this was going to space out too much. Thankfully, I was able to reshape that a good bit. But one thing that I did notice was that one of the panels, I don't think I scaled it correctly because it looks like it's slightly larger than the other. So what I'm going to do is run off and reprint this overnight. And then next week, I'll have an update to the helmet here with the proper scaled piece in place in the helmet. But for now, it's worked out great because I can show you how you're able to use a smaller 3D printer to make some really large props. Oh, but first, before I try it on, one thing I'm missing is the visor. So of course I went off and resin 3D printed a visor as well, printed this on the Elgu Saturn. I ended up using Ciratec. Uh, this is their smoky black, which is, I'm hoping with a little bit of elbow grease and effort, I'll be able to make this semi-transparent and that dark visor color. It'll be a fun little test to see what we can do with that as well. I might end up trying to print this as well in clear resin and just tinting it and seeing how that works. And I've got the visor lightly taped in place and it's looking pretty sharp. Even though I've already cured this in UV light, I don't necessarily want to put this directly against my face and my skin. So I have this little baklava on. All right, let's test it out and see how it fits. All right, I'm hoping this looks cool because I cannot see through the visor right now. <laughs> So again, the whole point of this video is to show you that you should not be limited by the size of the build volume of your resin 3D printer. If you wanna print really big things, run off and print them and weld them together. If you're interested in printing your own resin Mandalorian helmet, I'll have links down below to Rob's files over on my mini factory. A huge thank you to Elgu for sponsoring today's video and a big shout out to all my Patreon members. I am in the process of uploading all of my resin 3D printer profiles along with all the support settings as well as some of my FDM 3D printer profiles. So if you're interested in taking advantage of some of those, you can find links down below to my Patreon. Hey, thanks again for watching you guys. Hopefully you enjoy this and I'll be doing some follow-up videos here on the finishing of this Mandalorian helmet. I'm really excited to get this one finished and completed. And like I said, I need to reprint one of the pieces here, but outside of that, I think it looks pretty dang good. Hey, thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye now.